Alright guys, I got a 2003 Ford Taurus today that needs a starter and it's a more of an intermittent uh, crank situation and this one actually has a uh, issue where it seems like it's the battery because the brushes are so oil soaked that they uh, just don't have the contact and I'll show you why and how these fail on these unfortunately it's a bad design and then this one had a oil leak on top of it uh, to make it even worse. The first thing we're going to do is disconnect the main negative battery post and isolate it with a rag off the side. That way there's no chance of accidental contact and then we can get down below and start working on it. Now you can do it from the top here if you're in a parking lot. You can do it. Uh, but it's qu quite easy. You can get to everything right through this opening right here but we're going to be doing it from the bottom for instructional purposes alright so underneath the car here you can see it, it's just totally oil soaked and this one actually has a leaky oil filter Let's see if I can show it, you can just see how oily it is up there coming down it's just soaking the brushes big time as it gets in there, I've actually pulled one of these apart before and the brushes just look destroyed in there from being soaked all these years. So the oil pan is suspect also. It's real common on the age. You can see it's actually leaking. And it's not just the oil filter, but uh, th that usually doesn't soak the starter so much as uh, doing a oil change and loosening that filter or a leaky oil filter as in this case. Um, every time this thing gets an oil change, uh, the starter gets an oil bath. It's a horrible, horrible design. I see it all the time. Where they uh, have intermittent no cranks and uh, maybe uh, slow cranks and it's due to those brushes wearing out. So we're going to change it out. We're going to fix the oil filter leak for now for this customer. And then we're going to go from there with uh, our misfire diagnosis, which is a separate issue on this one. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take the nuts off that hold these wires on. This one's a 10 millimeter, and then this one's a 13 millimeter. And then we can get these wires out of the way and then concentrate on the bolts that actually hold the starter on. All right, got the wires off, and that's how I put them off to the side. I hook them in the fan there. There we go. So they're up and out of the way and uh, don't fall down on me get my way uh, of taking this off. At this point on this side of the bell house and there's two 13 millimeter bolts and that's all there is to taking it off. One here and then there's one up here right there and then it's got a little nub right here that holds it uh, locates it in the bell housing here so just the two bolts all right, since we got both those bolts loose, we got the top one out, and uh, we're gonna leave this one in a little bit so that it'll hold the starter while we break it loose from the bell housing here. And uh, as you can see on these ones, on the bolts from Ford, they got this bluish greenish uh, coating on the threads, and that's so it transfers the ground from the bell housing to the starter reliably. It's like an anti-corrosion coating, maybe conductance improver. And uh, you'll, you'll see that like on ground screws, same stuff. And they're specialty bolts because the ground is way up there in the bell housing and uh, it needs to get transferred down and through to the starter. So that's very important too to use the original ones or get new ones from Ford that are uh, have that coating on them. Okay, so we got this bolt in a couple threads and we can start loosening the starter. Wiggle it like that and now we're free to uh, pull the rest of that bolt out and then pull it down safely. And right here is a really really good uh, demonstration of just how the oil gets in here and turns these brushes to mush. It's like it's like uh, caked on in there instead of like a um, it's still like a powdery material in here from the brushes wearing over the years. Uh, it, it comes like a mush and then that coats the commutator face also besides uh, the brushes themselves. And then there's a real issue transferring electricity to the commutator face. 
so that's where you get the intermittent start stops and uh, um, it seems like it's a dead battery type issue where it's not transferring so it's turning slow alright we got the bell housing all cleaned up and uh, the new oil filter on it doesn't leak and a new starter reman actually new hardware and I cleaned the old starter bolts up so that they uh, transfer the electricity also the ground path so we'll get it all, all up in there and then we'll uh, start the bottom one it's the easiest one to get to and then we can start threading in the top one by hand and uh, then tightening them down nice and snug and just make sure that this nub on the starter is sticking into the bell housing here so it locates it and if these are threading in properly then you can just tighten them down when you put your wires back on they'll probably just fall into place like this make sure these tangs are like this you see that tang and that one there that kind of locates them when you tighten them up now when you're tightening these back up just make sure you snug them down don't over tighten them they will snap off these studs on here and they don't need much just snug them down and uh, they'll stay. Make sure you put your negative cable back on nice and tight and uh, we're gonna go ahead and try it out. Alright let's see how fast she cranks now. Wow what a difference. What a freaking difference. Before I could go maybe once and be a slower crank second time around they got so coated, it would just be like a really slow, slow crank to the point where it just clicked. And you would think it's a battery, but uh, after a little diagnosis, you find the real culprit. Nice.